Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new show, which is very similar in style to the other only show that exists, if you can't tell from the background here. Uh, did we pick? We didn't pick a name for this. We're going to... We're going to be talking no, about wrestling no. stuff. <laughs> it's me it and Loki is. talking I, about I, wrestling I, stuff. I assumed it was going to be a similar branding to the Shonen and Chill where it would be a uh, wrestling and chill. Wrestling like and chill? Wrestling that, oh, yeah. it, that might kind of go into a different context when it comes to wrestling. So you That's know what? true. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Uh, yeah, well, we're going to talk about wrestling stuff. Specifically, WWE, Raw, SmackDown, and uh, pay-per-view events. Not NXT, because neither of us watch NXT. Um, mm-hmm. And then no other companies as well, because I don't know if Wokey watches them, but I don't, and I'm too lazy to do that, because sometimes I forget to yeah, watch these also. Like... I have to watch them after the fact. Yeah, it's a, I, I, I would gladly talk about uh, AEW, New Japan. You want to talk about Mex- uh, Mexican wrestling stuff, I can talk about that. El Santo movies, literally anything wrestling related, I typically try and keep track of as much of it as I can, including really old stuff. But for you, I think it's for, for the best. Yeah. If you don't don't lose track of this show, because if you allow me to keep talking about wrestling, <laughs> I will continue to talk about wrestling. So I think okay. in the preview of SmackDown Raw at a pay per view makes perfect sense. Perfect. All right. Well, then we'll, before we get out of hand, we'll jump right into SmackDown from uh, July twelfth. So that was all like fallout from Money in the Bank stuff happening post Money in the Bank uh, and Bloodline stuff were like the biggest things out of that, uh, which I don't know how I feel about either one of those things. I'm not the biggest fan of the new Bloodline. I don't know how you feel about them. The new Bloods? Basically, yeah. The new Bloodline here? Yeah. Uh, I still need to see more of it. I feel like... They're... I really like Jacob Fatu, but the others I'm not... Yeah, They're definitely one of the one of Rikishi's sons that they were able to put in there is really good, and the rest of them still need to prove themselves. It's unfortunate how badly they handled Solo Sokoa near the end. Yeah. <laughs> the stuff. Well, yeah, well, because, you know, I wonder if, because didn't Roman leave to work on a movie? He Isn't that did. why he's... I... I'll say it's a little bit of movie stuff, and then there was also maybe some personal stuff happening as well with the because his father did just most recently pass away. So I wouldn't know a hundred percent. Maybe it's like a combination of either way. Well, he yeah, I, kn- I knew his father did just. Pay, yeah, maybe he was ill or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I remember he was on a set of a movie shortly afterward, and I assume that was why he was uh, taking a break. But I wonder if they just weren't like aware of the fact that he wasn't going to be or like they were on really short notice. And they were like, oh, shit, we have just had Solo lose 48 matches in a row. <laughs> and now he has to be the new tribal <laughs> chief. Yeah, I think uh, a little bit of that. I feel like a lot of there's been a lot of hints of Solo. Like in the, through the Bloodline stuff, there was like him giving like the dog side eye glances at Roman saying like he very clearly wants to be the tribal chief, but he's here now. So he's not. Yeah, well, be. I mean, Roman just outright called him like the tribal heir, right? Like he was supposed to be the next guy. Yeah, but the problem is is that when they decided to do that and Roman went away, Solo had gone into the world's sickest losing streak that you had ever Yeah, had. right? Like, the most insane. Yeah, so it's really hard to bill him. And now he's wrestling Cody for the belt at SummerSlam. It's crazy. I mean, he's not going to win. Um, I would be... God willing. Yeah, yeah okay. I would, I would be shocked if he won at SummerSlam. Um, I don't see that happening, mm-hmm. but I guess he could. Um, I don't. I don't really understand the appeal of the other ones either, except for Jacob Fatu. I don't really see what the appeal of like Tama Tonga is. He is not really all that impressive, at least to me. It really kind of seems like they grabbed all of the like members of the that family that they didn't have in WWE yet because they couldn't use Jimmy, couldn't use Jay, couldn't use Roman. <laughs> Like I said, they they hit up Rikishi. Yeah, they, they had, were they like, what other kids you got? Yeah, how many more kids you got? How many more sons? He's like, you know, let me hit him up. I'm going to hit up him, my son in New Japan. I'm going to hit up my one from over here. They're going to come over. I feel like it's definitely a case of, like, this This is another problem that I think ha- is an issue, especially if you're not watching a lot of, like, um, other promotions, is that a lot of the times they bring in these dudes and they have, like, a history in other places but then all you really know is that um, 
you don't know any of that when they debut, debut in in WWE at all. So you're just kind of divorced from a lot of the like history they had where it's like, oh yeah, that really pops the people who are like uh too internet too connected to the internet wrestling wise like me. And I go like, "Oh my god, it's him. Uh, you know, he did so much work here, 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 here." It's like nobody cares when you come over. <laughs> yeah. It's like for the average people it's like you need to prove yourself now and one of them is and i think the others just need more time to find their footing it's just unfortunate that they're being put into a main event spotlight which yeah. is not a good way to learn <laughs> no and yeah well you have people who you know, like you said not a good way to learn and you're putting them up with like cody randy orton and like all these dudes i mean yeah. and also ever since jacob fatu came in which i mean obviously people were really excited for him to come over um but once they put him in, they're giving him, like, all the spotlight from everybody. <laughs> so I don't oh, feel like yeah. it's helping any of the others at all, either. They gave, they gave him the Braun Strowman special of, I'm just going to beat every single tag team here. He's going to come in and beat you know, everybody, yeah. I have invalidated this entire roster by myself in a single night. Let's go. Yeah, they let him um, show out. Uh, it was pretty crazy. It was. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a weird growing pains of, like, trying to find your proper footing when some of them feel a little bit more geared for it than others, which is specifically Jacob Fatu is probably, but I think the main thing here is like, it turns out we really wish you had been here much longer than solo. What? Yeah. We wish that you were the one in solo's position right now. A little bit. I Um, will say solo's playing it on the mic pretty good. I think he's like pulling it off, but in, in a wrestling match, he's just not very interesting. Or good, yeah, I think, like I think I think that's fair to say. He has like the old style of like, um, I guess the 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 best way I can think about it is like literally looking into like an old family member. It reminds me a little bit of when Umaga was wrestling, um, except for no wait, Umaga when he was wrestling had the opposite problem. He never spoke. He had another yeah. person speak for him, but then he was an actual like crazy dude in the ring. Mm-hmm. I need him to be as crazy as that to fully achieve the, the and show the tribal chief the the show that he is worthy to be the tribal chief because that's what roman was he was a dude who would like literally talk down to you and then when he got in the ring yeah he always cheated the win but also he was dominant in the ring when he was doing his stuff um so i need a little bit more of that from solo before i can truly believe he's going to be the tribal chief and it also doesn't help that it really does feel like we're just setting you up so that when roman comes back yeah i was about to say it really feels (laughs) like his only job here is to make everyone hate him. So when Roman comes back and beats the shit out of him, everybody pops really hard. Yes. And he's doing a good job of that in terms of building it up. In terms of the actual wrestling bit, I do wish it was a little bit better. But in terms of making you hate him, he's doing a really yes. good job at that. Yeah, yes. And But then, you know, then now that we mentioned that, it kind of makes me wonder, like, do they even care if he gets that good in the ring? Because the goal isn't for him to be the main eventer guy it's just for him to be there until roman comes back Mm, i would say that you still need some level of ability to even if you aren't good in the ring like a good example of this is like rock versus hulk hogan like hulk hogan can't wrestle for shit at the age he was when he fought rock but you still had that standoff and you're able to like tell a story throughout the match itself um he needs to get that ability at the very least yeah if he doesn't get the... that then it's gonna be like mm, go ahead oh i was gonna say one of the biggest things that sticks out to me in it was solo in the ring is uh the wrestlemania 40 match with cody when john cena runs out and clotheslines him over the top rope and he has to turn like he's like looking back over his shoulder at Cena so that he can then turn toward the rope to jump over top of it instead of like <laughs> getting clotheslined out of it backward like most people do. Um yeah. And I was just like Jesus really? <laughs> like is that Yeah, it's it, it, it's the safety stuff of like either he's trying to play it extremely safe or he's just unsure if it's going to happen. Like the thing that always bothered me whenever um this happened a decent bit whenever anyone wanted to take a chair shot the second they put like their hands up to defend themselves. It was always a case of like, well, okay, just don't use the chair shot to the head then. Hit him in the body if you're going to yeah, actually just yeah. do it that way. <laughs> like, it's a little bit too defensive uh, in a lot of cases. But yeah, I need him to be at least able to 
tell the story though because when he goes against roman it either is going to be one of two things it's going to be a complete squash match which perfectly fine i guess if at that point you realize okay the solo Soko experiment is ended and it's ended on this but if you actually want to build a legit wrestler needs to be able to make it an exciting match basically what i don't want is jay versus jimmy at wrestlemania no god please no see i don't even dislike jay but that match sucked that that match unbelievably sucked and that's what happens when you have like no heat in a <laughs> in a fight when people just don't care and that the people who are specifically wrestling are family and they're just like you know what we're gonna put on the world's most awesome house show match <laughs> let's go well yeah because like i mean both of them pretty much only know the same moves and they're both really limited in singles yeah. super kick spear splash that's what they do and like Jay's good with the crowd, but the whole point of the match was like, it's brother versus brother, and I don't think a single person in that building gave a shit about no. the feud going on between the two of them at all. It just Not didn't matter. All. No, that like my favorite part of that was when I think it was Jimmy was yelling at his daughter and said, get off your phone. <laughs> and... <laughs> watch this which is maybe the sad is it's close it's pretty close to the jeb bush please clap it's him yelling at his daughter please watch, watch hey, please watch me wrestle please, i'm watching <laughs> please watch it's wrestlemania it's brother versus brother can you can you not give me some form of attention please so sad and that's what i don't want solo versus roman to be is like uh everyone happy that roman's there and then they get in the match and it's like oh uh, yeah all right, I guess he won. Let's move on. Yeah, I guess Roman just <laughs> just squashed him immediately. I I don't know. I've also seen people, and I kind of am in the same camp of wanting it to be like the um, a bloodline like war games match, so it's not just solo or you know Tama Tonga mm. in there all the time, where it's like those three. Because my assumption is that Tonga Loa is never going to wrestle. Um, he's just <laughs> there to like stand he's around. Really, he's... Yeah, he's, he's there because they needed a fourth guy. Because the last group had four guys. Um, yeah, but the rest, the, the three of them that are going to wrestle is Solo, Jacob, and Tomatonga. And then you have people saying they want it to be Roman, Jimmy, and Jay against them. Uh, I would, I would probably be cooler with that one, just because I want to see Jacob Fatu wrestle because I feel like he's the only one that could at that level right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be interesting, but I don't know, man. It's it's just hard for me to take the the new bloodline threat seriously. Like, yeah. Especially they, they, with how they're billing them now with all the announcers being like, these are criminal monsters. <laughs> and it's like, okay, yes, one of them did in fact go to jail at 18 for a, an armed bank robbery, but that, that's still kind which of Which is a Jacob bit... Fatu, I think, right? Yeah, the one that is actually legitimately the one dangerous. That's, yeah, the one that's, yeah, actually good. Uh, didn't didn't Jay or Jimmy? Or, I think it was Jay, right? Because that's why Drew McIntyre yeah. was like, "How'd you get into Canada?" Yeah, they all they've all had yeah. some form of legal trouble. I think oh, I forget which one of them. One of them got arrested for drunk driving as well. They've all had some form of issue, except for I think Roman <laughs> is the only one that has not has kept the record clean as far as everything is concerned. Well, yeah, he was like a college football athlete and such, so that makes sense. Yeah. These were the sons of Rikishi. His dad was out there doing whatever. They were out there doing <laughs> crimes, apparently. <laughs> Don't know what the hell was going on in the Rikishi household. Yeah, well, you know what? I respect it. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, exactly. But yeah, I don't know. It, I'm, it, it's a weird main event, too, right? Because like, I can't, like, for SummerSlam, I mean, because I can't imagine caring all that much about the match Cause I, maybe it's just because i consider it a foregone conclusion maybe it isn't but yeah i i'm very comfortable in saying that i would be shocked and, and, if cody did not win and those are the scariest matches to go into when you're like so 100 percent sure it's gonna go one way and then you think oh wait a minute what if they're actually going to swerve it and say this is going to be such a moment when nobody expects it? And yeah, you go, wait, God. no, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't that's such do a that, bad please. idea. No, don't, please don't do it. And that's the scariest thing about a lot of WWE writing is that sometimes you'll think, oh, this is a lock in for happening. And then it just, they decide to just and do it at the last second like, and change it. Do not do it at all. Yeah, no, that's not, uh, yeah. not what I'm hoping for. Not, <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, but we'll, we'll see how the Bloodline stuff goes. I think there that there's unfortunately a lot of like road up to lead up to it because you have to also get Jimmy and Jabe and back on good terms with with uh with Roman. Which yeah, is be a which large I think is, yeah, kind of a hard it act. To be well, a... I mean, Jimmy is right ish because he didn't do yeah, anything since Jimmy WrestleMania, just... right? He got taken out is what my brother... That's right. That's what happened. He got taken out. Where is he now? Still recovering, apparently. Yeah, he got that bad. Yeah, because he got speared off the stage. Yeah. They should should, <laughs> they should do a with the shot of saying where the current ones are. Uh, Roman missing. Jay made eventing and being made event Jay. And he showed Jimmy and he's like in a full body cast. <laughs> in <a hospital laughs> like the Spongebob guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just hear the bottom of <laughs> what everyone's been doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the side of him is like, what about Paul Heyman? He's there too. <laughs> both... Yeah, Paul got obliterated, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I yeah, assume it's, that's going to be part that... of it when Roman comes back, because he's going to be all mad about that. Yeah, all stuff to wait for the future. But for now, we just have to see how they're how they're going to be doing. At the very least, I'm sure even if Solo's not winning he'll hopefully have like some form of like a threat to look like <laughs> at least yeah. look more threatening than he currently is the, even though oh they God, try please, so hard yeah. with all those pictures <laughs> God, those edits of the SummerSlam of the SummerSlam poster are some of the funniest shit ever <laughs> oh my god the SummerSlam edit first of all that poster is ridiculous because if you look at it the car is horizontal in that alleyway <laughs> it like, <is>. it's <laughs> completely horizontal in that alleyway but the edit have you seen the one where they're all McDonald's employees leaving the McDonald's? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did. So funny. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so fucking funny. It's a shame because I bet this is the exact type of reaction they really don't want and they keep leaning harder and harder into going as hard as possible. Yeah, because well, they keep just... wanting them to be like the, the super tough thing and it's like... Yeah, it's it's super funny because they're like, no man, they're super tough, like mafia style family. And then the fans go out to them and go like, so let's go out, ink ink. And then they put them in like a <laughs> lock the clown nose, basically. Like, yeah, pretty it's... much. Oh man, yeah, bloodline. <laughs> we'll yep. see where it goes. Uh, yep, pretty much. Uh... All right, so. We'll... We'll transition off the bloodline. How do you feel about the new uh, Miss Money in the Bank? Hmm. I thought it was interesting the way that they, she was doing the whole... Uh... So I really like Money in the Bank because it's a good way of like making a star and then making them get the title. And then it's also a little bit like, well, are they deserving? If it, they're assuming that their face is like, well, are they deserving of it? Because they just want it in a sneaky way. Or yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of uh, what they're doing with Damian Priest right now, I feel like. Yes. So there's multiple ways to do it of like, did they actually deserve to win it? And then if they're here, they're like, no, they totally didn't deserve it. But now they're going to do everything under their eh, 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 evil heelish ways to kind of keep it that way. So with her, it's I feel like they're kind of currently on a crossroads of deciding which way they want to go, because um, it was very clearly like if you have money in the bank, she should have she should have cashed it. In. Yes, <laughs> cashed it in. when Bailey was like down and completely out. Yeah, she should have cashed. Yeah, in. she should have cashed in. But then they did at least enough for them to be like, oh, she was still very undecided if this is the way I want to go. Um, so I'm interested to see more of it. I'm still, it's still a new concept to me for women to even have. See, back in my day, back in the rough in the 2000s, women didn't have the right to be money in the bank holder. <laughs> so I'm really interested to see where they go with it because it seems pretty clear they are tired of men having money in the bank because they immediately yeah. lose it. Well, I feel like so. it's hard to do because the, 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 again, this is just the assumption, um, but that mm-hmm. Cody's going to have the belt for a long time. And. The, the main thought is that Gunther is going to win the belt at SummerSlam off of Damien. And so if you have money in the bank, but you have two people you don't want to lose like, the belt like for a long time, it kind of defeats the purpose. Because Damien Priest was getting memed to hell and back for never cashing in the briefcase. Yeah, he was. Uh, and I feel like that's not a situation they want again. So I guess it makes sense to have Drew basically waste the briefcase so that they don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, uh, again, it makes sense, but I, I've always been, as the, someone who actually got to see Money in the Bank growing up, seeing these dudes who would be like you, it was, it was, it was, I don't know, it was just different. It was like seeing dudes like CM Punk win it, and then being like, oh yeah, they have it, and that was a dude who were like usually was in maybe intercontinental status, and now the, maybe they can get that big championship or something like that. It, it's a different kind of feeling. At least as far as the men goes. And for women, I'm a little bit more hopeful to see where it goes and see where she ends up deciding yeah, when well, she's I mean, going to cash uh, in. The women's one has a 100% success rate, and they keep saying that, like, all the time. Uh, oh, which makes me think she's mean. not going to win when she can. I think that she might not, because every time they show her with it, they're always like, well, you know, the woman's money in the bank has a 100% success rate everyone who's ever cashed it in has become champion so now i think she's gonna lose well that that's actually how they're gonna reintroduce brock lesnar is that when she goes to reintroduce <laughs> it he's like i heard there was a 100 percent streak that needed to be broken <laughs> he shows up and immediately f5s her and causes her to lose the match <laughs> you never see him again uh yeah i think that's also just as likely but i also feel like anyone who has ever lost with the money in the bank usually has never recovered <laughs> right after losing it. I think it was a case of just like, you idiot. I think the well, only yeah. person that has is John Cena. And that's because he's John Cena. Yeah, I think Drew McIntyre not... will be fine. Yeah. Well, it's it's weird with the money in the bank because the only way to realistically lose with it is to do something really fucking stupid, right? Like, yeah. Because the, the obvious correct thing to do is just wait until whoever has the belt is like on their ass and can't move. And then you walk out and just win immediately. Like, Drew's cash-in was stupid, because he cashed in Very when stupid. both of them were still fine. <laughs> like, there's no reason, to, like, even if Punk jumped him, he should have cashed in at the point where it wouldn't have mattered, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. You're right on that. And the, the the most famous dumb one was Sandow. I think he, I think the reason it actually killed him is because Cena was down, and he went to go win the championship, and then Cena just won. <laughs> and, and that was the death of that character <laughs> he was never seen as world heavyweight title because not only did you cash in they were prone you had everything for you and you lost and you lost well yeah that's that's john cena for you yeah it is but in terms of uh yeah I'm, I'm curious to see how the money in the bank for the females goes um i'm liking the current buildup that they got for it which is amazing because i usually really don't like anything that is close to nia Jax. so I think that she's actually kind of good the past recently. Like, I've seen a lot of, like, I, was, I haven't really been watching, like, religiously until uh, WrestleMania earlier this year. You you weren't there for the my hole? No. For when she oh, when, when she was in a match and she got hit on the ass and she screamed out, my hole! <laughs> my hole! She's really approved from that. I think, honestly, that was the wake-up call. Because she's been amazing after that, after she left for, I think, either... I think it's because she didn't want to have get the COVID shot. I don't remember why she left, but she left. I think there was one person that was like that. I can't remember if it was her or not, but someone left. But she left, she came back, and she's been better since then. So. Yeah, I, I think that she's very good recently. Mm -hmm. um, my assumption, there's an improvement. Yeah, my assumption here is going to be that um, she's going to win, and then Tiffany's going to cash in on her. Because their whole thing right now is that they're like buddies, and Tiffany didn't cash in for her last time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I assume that's what's gonna happen. Is he's gonna, she's gonna ca either she's gonna cash it in on her, or the fact that she has it and Naya has the title is gonna be like a point of contention between them, one of the two. Mm -hmm. yeah, is my assumption. It's, it's yeah, I think that's a pretty good direction to go with, and is actually interesting because I, I'm just glad that they're doing stuff with Bailey again because I feel like she had that title and then they decided to not do anything with her <laughs> for for a bit, and now they're they're back on track, and it's like okay. Interested again. Let's see where this goes. Bailey's funny to me because she's just like a generic, really nice girl. <laughs> she's just so nice all the time now. That's like her yeah. whole thing. She's back to kind of old Bailey after the just, the, uh, the simple of it. Nice. But I, yeah, I really like Bailey. She's a big wrestling fan. Yeah, I like her. Um, too. She's cool. Yeah, back in the old days of NXT, that's what they used to make fun of her. Is that she was a uh, really a big, which is really fucked up. That the the WWE hated wrestling fans back then because they're like, oh, she's a big wrestling fan. Let's make fun of her. How stupid <laughs> idiot! How dare you like wrestling? Oh, you liked Hulk Hogan back in the day. You like Macho Man? Idiot! Get out of here. <laughs> so I have a I have a deep uh, like for Bailey. I think she's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a fan. I like her. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's see. What, what else was there on SmackDown to talk about besides Bloodline and Money in the Bank? Uh, new tag champs re rematch. Uh, yes. Because DIY, because DIY won the belts, and then they had their rematch with uh, I don't remember the team's name. It's Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Team asshole. Yeah, the p- team punchable face. Yeah. Um, team, team. There's no one else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, team. The only ones we've got for the for the match. Yeah. Um, and they won again. It was an okay match. Uh, oh, oh, their team name is A Town Down Under. That's their team name. That's why I chose to ignore it. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, it's not <laughs> a very good team name. Yeah, well, no, yeah. Not. Fair. Um, that was kind of a meh match. It was fine, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a... I think it's fair to say that there's an ongoing issue with tag teams in WWE and that uh, they need to get better at actually promoting them. Yeah, I would say so. And giving, yeah, give them time to actually do stuff. Like, a lot of people were talking shit on R-Troop and Miz... But when they were champion, I knew they were champion. I don't know who the hell the champ who beat them. I just know that they're not champ. They're not. Uh, they're not Judgment the tag team champs anymore. Judgment Day. Beat there you go. J- Judgment yeah. Day are the current holders of it. But they have this problem where it's like I don't know if it's right for there to be a world where just like I don't know who the tag team champs are. And maybe it's just because WWE has always seen tag teams as a means to promote one guy. Where yeah, one a person tag gets the push now. and the other one gets the boot. Yeah. Yes, basically, and I feel like they tried. They were almost able to get away with that with New Day, because New Day is maybe the, the, one of the most popular back in the day, back when uh, bef- when they had Big E before he got injured and they were separated. They were like one of the biggest tag teams that had the tag team titles and never actually did a breakup angle. They actually just continued to support each other and were actually <laughs> really nice, proper tag teams. And they lost that when they lost Big E, unfortunately. And now they're like nothing, which is crazy to me. Is that one at one point these were one of the highest merch sellers in WWE, and now you can't do anything with either one of them. They just had so many setbacks. And I wonder, it's it's just literally because they ran out of dudes to actually fight up to them. That's why they fought the Usos like five thousand times. It's like <laughs> who else was active at that time? It's like we, the Bludgeon Brothers. It's like, listen, I really like both with Eric Rowan and <laughs> Brodus and, and Lee, but it's not, it's not, it's not the same. You're not building them at this. It's very clear that there's these are the using these are your dudes that you're promoting, and then yeah. the rest of these dudes don't matter. <laughs> El Matadors. It's like what? This is so. That's why I think the problem with DIY is like I like them as tag champs. I think they're great uh, wrestlers, but then who do they fight next? Like who's next after this? Them again? <laughs> yeah, the, another match against them. I mean, oh, well, I guess they're they would be on Raw. I was gonna say I, I'm assuming the Wyatts are gonna have a tag team somewhere in their big old ensemble, but at some point, yeah, they'll they'll probably be on they're on Raw, not SmackDown. So I don't know. Yeah. Also, I thought it was weird now that because you brought this up uh, earlier. I thought it was weird how much people shat on Truth and Miz. Like they weren't that bad, man. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I'm going Everyone's to be honest. Like, they're holding the tag titles back. And I'm like, from who? Yeah, I was oh, like, who? what fucking show are you watching? Is this WWE where the tag teams are supposed to matter? They usually don't matter. They haven't mattered for such a long time. At least this was a tag team people liked and knew. And you knew that they had the titles, which is maybe the most important thing to have for a tag team. Yeah, even um, like... Because I've been doing my catch-up on, on tag team stuff. And I... There was like the Usos, obviously, mm-hmm. um, that had it, and then you know, like you said, New Day, and then maybe like before that, I don't know, the, the Shield. I guess. Shield? No Shield. I, yeah, I guess Shield. There was times where there were tag teams, but they weren't. Yeah, because really they, they like... were with. Uh, it was wasn't it Seth and Dean for a bit. Yes, that that would yeah. make the most sense to me. Um... But yeah, you can see the the issue here. It's like, yeah, those are all the big tag teams of the day. But then I mentioned all the other ones that were there where it was like, oh yeah, the Matadors. And then later on, they became known as like the Puerto Rican, they come to Puerto Rico team. I don't remember what they were called. Like Primo and Epico were just like, at certain point, their tag team gimmick was, isn't Puerto Rico awesome? You should buy a timeshare. <laughs> and it's like, there are these other guys challenging for the fucking title? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Like, they need yeah, to do a better job it's... of, like, actually building legit tag teams, and then we can care about the division again. At least with Miz and R-Truth, these are two dudes I liked, and I could see them with the title, and I felt something when they had it. And then mm-hmm. now they've lost it, 
And it's like back to the Judgment Day, I guess. Yeah, who I don't care about. Uh, I'm not a big Judgment Day guy. Um, no. Not a big fan. The no, we'll women's get tag them. team we'll... division is pretty good, though. Yeah, it is. We have no problem with that. But the, uh, I mean, they're the, doing the a better job with them than they are with the men. It's rough right now, for sure. It is. It is, for sure. And then the, I think the the other things on SmackDown, what, is it LA Knight? Is that the only thing left? Uh, yeah, LA Knight and his uh, one-sided feud with Logan Paul, because Logan Paul is never there to feud with. <laughs> Never has a man. I've I've literally watched in um, Japanese wrestling a man wrestle an invisible person. This is doing more work than what the man who wrestled an invisible person. <laughs> yeah, oh like it's annoying because I actually like Logan Paul in the ring, like when he's wrestling. Um, yeah, I think he's pretty good, but he's never there, ever. No. Was the, he, the, this... What is the statistic? Over two hundred days as champion with two defenses. That's right. Insane. Po- Insane. Quite possibly, quite possibly one of the worst tag belt runs in the history of the belt. At least when I can look at other like people who have had the belt who are unliked, like Honky Tonk Man, at least he defended that belt every once in a while. And when you have me defending Honky Tonk, someone I actively <laughs> don't like, you're doing something bad. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with him, because I thought he quit all the stupid boxing shit. So he could focus on wrestling. What the fuck is he focusing on? Staying at home? Yeah, I don't really understand, uh, like, why he still has it. I've seen people, theor- like, theorize that it was in the contract for Prime, is that Logan gets to keep the belt for a while. It They've got to be putting it on LA Knight, right? I hope to God. They need to keep that title away from him. It's so dumb that he has it. Like, the, the fact that you can have your U.S. champion... In your Japan show because he's fucking banned from the country yeah. means that you should not have. <laughs> yeah, because he's banned from going to Japan. Or well, he's not banned, but he'll be arrested on sight if he goes to Japan. Yes, that's bad. Another person on that same roster was arrested for armed bank robbery, and he was allowed to go to Canada. Yeah, so they got him into going. Canada. Um, but no, it's it's gotta be. They've gotta be taking it off of him. It, they have to. It, I really it's like. like uh, it, it's really it made it made me really sad because it's another case of like I really don't like these type of wrestlers who are in the mold of Brock, where like in theory they can put on a really good match, but then they're just never there. Like Brock is the one that I always go to because he's the one that's like he was champion and then he's champion. He never defends it. He never does anything. He fucks off. But even then, he did more when he was there. Um, to promote the belt or something than he's done. Like, Rousey was another case, I think, for it, where she was... She showed up, she did her matches, and then she left, and then now he's, like, the ultimate form of it, of just, like, yeah, I show up, I do some flippy stuff, people like me, and then I just leave, and I keep the belt. And then his matches also always end. I bring out the brass knucks, and then I, I, I win or I lose, and then everything... Everyone <laughs> leaves home unhappy like there's no reason for the him fact to have that, that belt. his match at wrestlemania was a carbon copy of last time down to having another uh what do you call it? influencer friend in the prime bottle was absurd it was ridiculous it, dude it was so unbelievable i remember going like i can't believe this is the same goddamn match this is so annoying <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I, I really don't like him. As, the only reason, like you said, is like I think it's a ca- contractual obligation because I remember in the beginning times, it's like, how come he isn't playing heel? Why is he playing face? And then everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, it's in his contract. That well, he's he, clearly uh, playing is. heel now. Yes, he is. But at the beginning, it was definitely a case of like, why isn't he playing heel? And they're just like, mm, there might be a little thing in the contract that says that uh, he would like to be viewed as a hero. And it's like, that one is never going to fly. Nobody no. likes him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, nobody <laughs> likes him. <laughs> That's part of his whole persona on the internet is that nobody likes him. Exactly. I've seen ICP get more cheers than Logan Paul has in yeah. WWE. And no, Logan, Logan impressive. Paul is not the guy who's going to rock as a face. It's not going to happen. Never. Never in a million years. This man could do... He could save kittens from a burning building, and I would still find a way to boo him on wrestling. Absolutely. Say, Damn. Yeah, no, it's not. 100%. It's not happening. So hopefully it goes no, on to not. LA Knight. But... I really hope so, because they, they, need, they need to put a belt on LA Knight. I feel like there's a lot of wrestlers now where it's like, 
I would like them to have a belt for acknowledging how good they are now. Yeah, Elliot Knight not... deserves one. I think he's he's definitely great. I'm a big fan. A he, lot of people he, call uh... him like a knockoff The Rock or like a knockoff Steve Austin. First of all, maybe in like promo style, but not really. And also, yeah. I mean, you that kind of makes sense, right? They're like the best ever. So yeah, you should probably I mean, he... if you're gonna model yourself after somebody. Not yeah, not everyone can be like. It's so weird because it's like, yeah, he's copying this. It's like, well, what do you want him to be like? Do you want him to be like everyone else who shows up and is like, hey, man, let me tell you something. It's like, no, he's at least copying someone who's, like, interesting to talk to and hear about. Because that was always the problem with, like, when they had, uh, when Roman first tried to be babyface and they would give him lines of, like, uh, it was like Vince McMahon's eighty-year-old mind is like, "This is where you're gonna you're gonna hit him with a suckering succotash." Yeah, the suckering like, succotash. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like really lame stuff. And at least now he's found a cadence, and he's found out. <laughs> it reminded them, by the way, they really still like a lot of these old '90s style wrestling dudes. You should do more of this. And yeah, I think he's doing a perfectly good job of, um, obviously being influenced by them. But then at the same time, I feel like his style of stuff is different enough like i i hear a little bit of stone cold but i still feel like it's its own and the same thing goes for the rock where it's like yeah it's a very pompous type character but it's not 100 percent. yeah um and it's it's better than the other fake rock that was going around at that time which was wcw's juventud guerrero who used to call himself the jews <laughs> and would one for one copy what the rock said <laughs> on wcw so you'd tune in on raw hear the rock talk and then you'd go to wcw and hear who would say who wants to see the juice wrestle <laughs> that's amazing i need to look up more wcw stuff but that's a story for another time yeah it, uh, i'll give you a link of all my favorite uh good and bad wcw stuff absolutely please do uh, yeah. All right, well, I guess we, we can jump over to Raw, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, I tend to prefer the Raw roster, personally, most of the time. Um, yeah. But I thought it was pretty good. So we got, obviously, we've got the Wyatt stuff going on. That happened again. I'm not really under sure I understand what the segment really was. It was like, they beat up Bo Dallas, and then the Wyatts came out, and then they posed again. <laughs> and that yeah, was that's right. pretty much it. It's really... <laughs> That's a, yeah, we're gonna have. It was really interesting, especially after like the 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 VHS tape that they had for this week, which was uh, Eric Rowan putting on an amazing promo that was connecting the history of talking about him losing Brody and then him also losing um, Bray. It was some amazing stuff, and then he, you get him in the ring, and it's like this is a very interesting way of doing it i guess to show off the character a little bit but it does feel like a slight disconnect from all the other stuff that we've seen on the vhs tape just a little bit a little bit I guess were... yeah yeah so... i think you just have to get him to wrestle at some point like we need we need them to start doing something because they just kind of show up and it's cool when they show up i really like like the five i like the horror yeah. haunted house vibe um yeah we're both here this is a wyatt six yes. safe zone yes this is a, this is a wyatt six safe zone <laughs> Um, but I really need them to start doing something because it seems like, you know, for like the promos are great, but they just don't do anything. And they finally got in the ring. I thought they were going to at least like brawl out with Chad Gable, but they just kind of post. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. I'm also not 100% sure how I feel about Chad Gable being the one that, that they're going to start beef with. Yeah, that a... is a little weird because it seems like they stopped all of Chad's stuff. To pivot him over to these guys, it was a little bit weird. I think I think it's fair to say, like, hey, he was running a really hot angle. He was doing this. People were cheering my boy Otis, and then all of a sudden they went, "Yeah, it's over now." Like Otis said, "Like I'm sorry that happened to you, but we're done." And then he went he went back to go do whatever the fuck Otis does on his free time, and it's like, okay, I guess that's the I guess that's the end of it. Is the end of the abusive Chad Gable? Or yeah, like I thought, you know, Otis was like gonna turn on him, at, but at, uh, when he's matching at Sammy, when he kind of did, but kind of didn't. Like he yeah, left, was... but I thought he was gonna like take him out, you know, and just have like a. It feels like we never got that big moment of like, yes, Otis finally 
put we Chad at his place. My, we never got it. We never got what what I've been cheering for as a big fan of Otis. I never got my Ch- my Chad Gable versus Otis at WrestleMania. <laughs> match. I'm never gonna get that. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I like Chad too, so it's just weird. I do. But... I think he's doing real. I think that's probably why they put him on this because like he's doing really good. I think it could help sell this, and it's like. Well, people were really invested in the thing that was done previously, and it's a little yeah. bit weird that you're just cutting it off right here. But okay, we'll we'll see where it goes from here. At and least then, it shows... like, they keep going back to him, and he's like, "Hey guys, are we friends again?" And they're like, "No." And then that's it, and it's just over. <laughs> it's like some wounds don't heal. Oh, just shows up and says some wounds don't heal, and he eats uh, an entire <laughs> ham sandwich, <laughs> and then they cut away. <laughs> that's yeah. It's uh, it's gonna be interesting to start with. We'll see how it actually goes. I think it's just, they're set, they're setting up Chad pretty, pretty uh, pretty well to eat to to take a loss here by yeah. having his other dudes in there yeah. be like, well, these are the guys that we're mostly gonna lose, and then whenever Uncle Howdy or Bo decides to wrestle, he'll be the one to lose to them. But yeah, well, we'll see. I'm still I'm still interested. I do like you said. I need to see them try and do stuff. Maybe see them try and do some tag team stuff as well, just to get yeah. a little bit more. Get that the stuff in the ring happen. The yeah, yeah, just a little bit. But I really do like the vibe. I'm I'm really interested in a lot of a lot of the Wyatt Six stuff. Um, yeah, I have I have high hopes for it. Yeah. All right, so uh, Rhea Ripley back. Uh, that is one of the more interesting angles going on right now, in my opinion, is the comedic degree of borderline sexual harassment that Dom receives from Liv Morgan. Yeah. It is, uh, is, is very funny to me. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You know, I'll give it to him. They <laughs> at least it helps in the context of here of going like, listen, man. If this was any other, <laughs> if this was any other thing, I think it would actively be hating every single part of this because a lot of this feels gross and icky and wrong. But for some reason, they have somehow accidentally found the thing that they've always wanted, which is finding a way to do one of these angles, and it's like the perfect stars have aligned. Yeah, everything seems sense. to fit. And honestly, I think making Dom like so transparently not trying that hard to avoid it is helping a lot with that <laughs> because yeah. it's pretty like they keep telling him hey make it end and he's like eh. you know like all, the best he ever does is say like hey go away and then she doesn't and he's like okay he's like stop ah she stop goes, ah. <laughs> quit it leave me alone <laughs> Uh, this and last then... week of it was really good, uh, especially because they used the same Carlito joke twice, <laughs> <laughs> where Tom does something, and it, he fucks up, and Carlito just walks into frame and goes, dude. <laughs> and that's like the whole <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh, it's oh, really man. good. It's a good use of Carlito. <laughs> and then uh, Damien... Making fun of him all day was really good. Him telling him to go fight Jey Uso in Rhea's honor and then laughing about it was really fucking funny. That was really good. He was like, hey, man, you going to let him talk to you? You went to prison. Yeah, go you get go out there. Don't let him talk to you that way. Go get him. And then as soon as he's like, yeah, I'm going to do it, he just starts laughing and walks off. <laughs> I give him that laugh like, I just let that fool to fucking lose his back. <laughs> he is not beating me to bed, Jey Uso. Oh, that was good. No, it's it's funny. I also like Liv. I think she's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the match is going to be good with her and Rhea. I've seen a lot of theorizing about this one, too, uh, that Dom turns on Rhea for Liv, uh, which I could see happening, because it, it seems like they're building this up as, like, Finn is the one conspiring with Liv to fuck mm-hmm. everything up. Um... I don't really care who it is as long as it ends with a Judgment Day breakup. <laughs> we can finally decide the, the divide them by okay, these are the ones of the Judgment Day of people who that people like. Which after the Gunther thing is, <laughs> Damian Priest is now in that camp as well with Rhea, and then the others, the other. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I've also seen people say like both Rhea and Damian are going to get ousted from the Judgment Day around that time because Dom will either. Either he'll screw up trying to help Rhea and he'll end up helping Liv like he did in the Becky Lynch stuff, 
or he'll just straight up turn on her for Liv instead, because he she's bullying him or whatever. Uh, and then Finn and it, whatever beef he's like weird background beef he's got going on with Damien, where he's like every time Damien walks away, they like zoom in on his face and he frowns. <laughs> Um, is that he's he remembers gonna... that he was supposed to be the big champion, and now he's fucking tag teaming with JD McDonough. JD McDonough, yeah. Uh, they'll do that, and then they'll oust him and Rhea at the same time, and they'll have like a big face run because you can't really make Rhea Ripley a heel anymore because she's just too popular. Everybody loves her to death, so you can't really push her as the heel anymore. Um, and it seems like they don't know what to do with Damien because it seems like they want him to be a babyface, but they can't commit yet, so they keep like pretending that he's not even though he clearly he is clearly is yeah after after that raw he is <laughs> yeah there's just no way he isn't uh yeah especially after the gunther uh promo that was pretty brutal <laughs> bit of, yeah, bit that, of mic that, work that right there like, okay yeah i mean he did uh an excellent job we'll get to that when we get there but it definitely helps solidify the idea that he is face and he would be one of the dudes who was leaving because he was definitely one of the dudes who was just like Get this crazy woman out of here. We, yeah, he we have like, our stop own doing crazy that. woman. Yeah. <laughs> we have our own crazy woman, and she's going to come back eventually, and she is much stronger than a lot of us. <laughs> Fucking, uh, she's going to lift the shit out of... Uh, <laughs> out of that boy. She can bench press over half of you. I don't want to know if I want to <laughs> fuck with a woman like that, so you know what? I'm going to be on the right side of history and say, get this woman out of here. <laughs> so very valid. Uh... Mm-hmm. The Dom J match was kind of nothing, but it was funny. Um, it's yeah. what it is. <laughs> it was it was a, it was a comedy match, which Jay is very good at. Um, yes, that's probably when he's at his best. Because Jay wrestling, he does his that that thing that he does where it's his version of the Rock spit in the hand. Yeah, but it's so over the top that it comes off as kind of dumb. <laughs> that's saying something <laughs> when in good when you consider it as a rock move. Yeah, well, when a... you compare it to the rock and it's still too over the top. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like if the rock is giving you notes and he says, "Hey, keep it subtle," you know, you're kind of fucking. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, you fucked up a little bit somewhere along the line. Yep. Um. Look over there. There's nothing really. It's like Seamus versus Bronson Reed was just kind of a thing. It was fine. Yeah, Sheamus is always able yeah, to Yeah, it's it's hard match. to it's hard to do bad with uh Sheamus. Yeah. Selena Vega got uh obliterated by like in like 10 seconds by Shayna Baszler cheating. Um which I guess was fine. Uh oh, okay. So the the Drew McIntyre coming back and and randomly getting jumped by Seth Rollins thing. Oh, uh, that was a weird little bit of segment there, because because it's one thing about this whole priest Drew McIntyre thing is that Drew McIntyre very obviously has a point that no one yeah. for some reason is willing to acknowledge. But yeah, and, and he's kind of correct completely. Like a good heel, he is correct in his uh, in his views, but for whatever reason, people are continuing to boot him. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's because Punk is obviously super popular, so anytime Drew McIntyre yes. is anywhere, they're going to chance CM Punk for the rest of his life. Um, so he, so he, he really is just like one of those old classic type of heels where it's like very clearly they are right about this, but you are not the main guy. Yeah. So therefore, you, boo. <laughs> you you got to lose anyway. Yeah. But it was funny to me because he, the because Adam Pierce is like obviously going too far with the like you need to apologize to these men right now, and it's like you got to chill. And he was even like calmly saying, "Listen." Let's just worry about the future. You're you're getting kind of you're pushing too hard here, uh, and they still went with it. And then Seth Rollins just kind of runs out, and is like, "Hey, <laughs> I'm here in case Punk can't make it to SummerSlam." Yeah, ah. that's exactly <laughs> what it is. And it's like really transparently that that's what it is, right? Like they're not. He didn't even do or say anything about Seth. He got in Adam Pearce's face, and then Seth ran out and was like. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, <laughs> Drew. And it's literally just we're inserting Seth into this feud because there's a chance that Punk is not ready to go by SummerSlam. Yeah, what a complete. Like I, I do like all three wrestlers involved. Um, 
but it is a complete shit show when you are trying to make a match when a man cannot is not yeah, known to they, be medically cleared. They just won't like. It's weird to me that they keep pushing this angle, you know, Punk versus Drew. But Punk can't wrestle, so the only way to keep pushing the angle is for Drew to wrestle and get fucked over, <laughs> and it just keeps happening. Yeah, so it kind of feels like we're in a never-ending nightmare of Drew can't move forward because the man he can't wrestle keeps making him lose every single match that he's involved in. Um, so it comes out very weird. I really do hope that um, Punk is actually going to be okay for SummerSlam because I need this to end. I need to get off the ride. <laughs> I need these men to move forward. But I guess this is also another way to just be able to occupy three people who would, in theory, be going for the title. But this is a good way to kind of stop them. Yeah. Um, I I really like Seth, so like, I'm okay with seeing him in matches. I don't know that I'd care to watch him wrestle Drew McIntyre again for nothing. <laughs> there's like no, there's no build up really there. Um, yeah. But it's fine, I suppose. I don't know. It is yeah. what it is. And it, yeah, it's definitely one of those. It's a real shame one of you guys got injured very immediately, and you've yeah, kind of been having to put this. Did Punk even do this. anything other than the Royal Rumble after he came back? No, Punk. Punk is like the man is built out of glass at this point. Glass this is true in AEW. Paper skin, yeah. Yes, that is, it is one hundred percent true because he also ruined multiple plans when he got his ass injured all constantly, and he's doing it again here. And it makes me go like, dude, you need to take more time off because it's very clear that you're coming back and you're not actually a hundred percent. Like you're like coming back at like eighty percent. You're like, okay, I'm good to go. It's like, no, you're old. <laughs> Stop, and you're not that muscle or muscular either. So like any move that he does seems to instantly break him. So. I need him to take as much time as possible. Yeah, it's, but... it's just not good. But and the problem too is that like, it's too late to pivot now, right? Because you, you've tanked multiple pay per views or PLEs or whatever you want to call them for Drew, just mm -hmm. for this Punk angle. So it's not like you can stop doing it. No, it's it's very. They've written themselves into an unfortunate thing, but they're doing their best with the idea that this guy can't isn't medically cleared to wrestle we're gonna try and do our best here so i'll, I'll give him that much but at some point yeah, like it has they, to end. they faked it with the whole like oh he's totally cleared oh no drew got him <laughs> now he's not anymore kind of thing um yeah it, it's a whole it's a whole mess but hopefully it stabilizes or balances out or something here pretty soon because it is definitely getting a little exhausting in, in the repetition it is. It really is. I I just need them to move on. To do something I, I really would have liked if the um the fake referee shirt was like the end of it. Like they didn't and then they did it again at Money in the Bank. I was like, Jesus man. Like give him a break, for God's yeah. sake. Fell for it again. He's like, Oh <laughs> damn you punk. Darn you, you CM Punk. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you know, 70 said going, oh, I hate that rabbit. <laughs> it really is borderline like that now. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Seth's all mad now because there was consequences and he was collateral damage or whatever. But then Damien Priest was like, it's cool. <laughs> we can ignore the bet. It's cool. Hey, man, it's cool. I, I, I sympathize with you. <laughs> I'm the nicest bad guy ever. It's chill. It's uh, chill. You know, I, I kind of want to be straight to my word here, man. It's cool. It's like, all right, well, let me go handle these assholes to make sure they don't interfere again. Yeah, again. We, let me go become part of this feud for a while, because Gunther's going to win the belt, and we can't take it off him. It's true. Which is a good chance to segue over to the the Gunther Priest talk off, and then the Gun uh, the Priest uh, Braun Strowman match. Uh, that that was pretty good, bro. That was probably some of the best mic work from Priest, that like ever, because he's very uh, wooden is probably a, a reasonable thing to call him on the mic most mm -hmm. of the time. It's someone who's definitely still like learning, so yeah. they, they have that like wooden delivery of like, well, you need to get better at this, my guy. But uh, yeah, it, this he, was he has, a, a good step forward. Yes, he has. He usually has very wooden delivery, and he's usually very like. 
he's the balanced one in the conversation. Like, I've always been comparing him to, like, Judgment Day's exhausted father. That he's just, like, <laughs> tired and, like, super fair, but trying to still not, like, you know. And uh, it was nice to see him kind of get fired up with Gunther here. He doesn't usually do that. Um, that was good. Oh, at least as a face. There's, like, heel clips, obviously, of him getting super livid. But as a face, he's very, like, calm and nice. And it was nice to see him get some some emotion in there. Uh, Gunther's promo was really good. <laughs> Man said, it's not my fault your parents didn't think you were worth providing a stable upbringing to. You are just like them. Poor. <laughs> Insane <laughs> thing to say. Oh my god, it was, it was it was actually insane because it it was enough to make it go like it, it was enough to make the crowd turn on him and make everyone be like, yeah, we're on Priest's side because we're poor like him. <laughs> we're also poor like Damian Priest. Yeah, get his poor get 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 your poor ass up and fight back, Damian. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a uh, really good promo stuff right there. Um, the Strowman match, I don't even know why they had it. I guess just to make Priest look good before summer. Yeah, just to keep showing that he's uh, a fighting champion and stuff. And uh, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he beat Braun, and he beat him pretty in a smart way. So it yeah, like, well, does I mean, its kinda, power. Just he like... kind of beat the shit out of Braun. <laughs> kind of crushed yes. his which is Which is really funny when you consider that Braun in previous times was at his peak when he's screaming, I'm not done with you, and catch my hands. And he was, like, tossing over ambulance trucks. <laughs> and he beat that guy. So it yeah. does help a little bit. Yeah. He'd be like, oh shit, he beat Braun. Destroyed Crazy. that guy. Yeah. Let's go. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited for for that match. At first, I was kind of like, eh, about this match because uh, you know everyone's kind of writing it off for Gunther. Um. But that this this I, was good stuff. I'm I'm interested in it yeah. now when I wasn't before. I really still feel I feel like after this one, it might lean a little bit closer to fifty fifty for me. Yeah, I think I the, think the that re- tonight there was a lot of like, hmm. They might be building priests to win this one. Yeah, I think the the idea here is that have priest um win and then show tell him that specifically what he said, which is that um he's still not understanding why he lost the intercontinental belt. So show him and then humble him in some kind of way. And by humble, I mean just make him more angry, make him more aggressive. Because currently, right now, he's in the same like. He's in the same like mode that he was when he lost to Sammy, which was like, ha ha ha, I'm I'm winning, so obviously, let's go. But we need to cut that off, and then he'll be back and he'll be like angry as hell, and he'll have to work his way back up to Priest. He won't have King of the Ring, he won't have that, and then finally, when he's worked his way up, then he beats Priest. And at that point, uh Damien will have fought enough dudes to make it actually worthwhile for him to beat the title off of him. Because I think at the moment right now Beating him, it doesn't really signify much other than to say, like, oh, yeah, that was the foregone conclusion. At least that's the way I'm currently going. That's if my idea, that's my idea for Priest winning at the long-term booking. Eventually, Gunther is winning, but they want him to just suffer a little bit more so that when he does get that belt, we get, like, mean, angry, I'm going to kill all you poor people, <laughs> Gunther. But the other way to look at it is that this was a similar <laughs> promo that Triple H gave to Booker T., where he said that you're not good enough, and obviously I'm the superior race, so I'm winning the title. <laughs> and Triple H won that. And Triple H is currently... <laughs> and I've never forgotten that he said, no, I need to win this. It will be such a good heel heat. And now that Gunther has delivered such a amazing promo that literally tears down Priest and makes it seem like, yeah, you're not good enough, the idea here is, is that if he loses, it turns out, okay, yeah, he was right. You weren't good enough. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this is really fucked up to give that to someone. Yeah. Uh, and I so that's why I, that's like my current thinking is like Triple H really does like that kind of style stuff. So I in my head, I'm like 50 50. It can go either way. He either Damien shows that Gunther is underestimating him and that's why he's going to lose because he doesn't have the heart or uh, Damien Priest is just too poor. He's a uh, skill issue. Get some money. Skill then, issue. Like, get your money up. That, yeah, exactly. Get your money up. You need to get focused on that. You're focusing too much on Liv Tyler. You need to be on the grind, my brother, is what he's trying to say to him. <laughs> you have too much women trouble. Exactly. Yeah, so, very your, interesting. We'll see together. where it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. 
And, and then, it, it, again, it was excellent job fight Gunther because he did exactly yes. what a heel needs to do and made you interested in that match. When beforehand it was like, oh, you know, we'll see how it goes. And I'm like, no, I, I, I want to see it now. Yes, I'm looking forward. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, and then, so I guess the last thing for Raw is uh, Sammy versus Ilya Dragunov. Good match. Yes. I really like Dragunov a lot. I know everybody does, so that's not like a big yeah. thing to say. Um, but I also really like Sammy, which it seems like yeah, not many so... people do for some reason. Because they're weird. Because <laughs> they're dumb. The, the way I say it is that they're dumb. <laughs> so yeah, I love it's Sammy. just it's weird. Like one, how do you not like Sammy Zayn? Dude's awesome. But also, it's weird how people are like adamant that he shouldn't be the champion. Like, why not? What what, what has like, he yeah. done? That... I, I mean, maybe it's just wrestling Twitter because wrestling Twitter is weird. Where it's like anytime anybody wins, that's not like the brand new guy. They're like, oh, his career's over. He's buried. They've destroyed yeah, this so... guy immediately. Like when Dragonov yeah, came in, I think he lost his first match. People were like, nope, it's over. Or like when they put Carmelo up against Cody and he lost. They're like, wow super cool to bring in the new guy and then immediately ruin him and it's like what are you talking about man yeah it's a it's a real dumb way of looking at it and especially when the the, the most crazy thing was i think people were calling comparing him to hulk hogan and i was yeah, like you Sammy, are out of your as if the intercontinental champion has that kind of sway <laughs> i was like are you unbelievably stupid have you this is the man who sold for Johnny Knoxville? Yeah, dude, and you're the gonna dude call lost him to Johnny home? Knoxville. He put on not only that, he sold for Johnny Knoxville, has an had an amazing match with Johnny Knoxville, and still has an ongoing beef because he has not forgotten the storyline that they are still feuding. Yeah, he he it, took a bowling ball to the dick in a Johnny Knoxville match. Yes, like that is. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it alone, is absurd man. to me. I love Sammy, and I've loved him ever since he was El Generico. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Ever since there was a wrestler similar to his style called El Generico. Yeah, that was a... that Sammy seems to have modeled himself off of. Yeah, he modeled <laughs> himself after, which is understandable because El Generico is currently living in retirement in a children's orphanage in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I can only hope that he's watching Sammy continue mm -hmm, his mm -hmm. style of wrestling. Yeah. And he's happy with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um... <laughs> So yeah, I, I love Sammy. I like um, Dragonoff as well. I think they're both fantastic wrestlers. Like even in the ring when it looked like, uh, I think Dragonoff got hit in the head and then he immediately hit a receipt on mm -hmm. <laughs> Sammy to give like him instantly. a cold elbow. Yeah, I was like, damn, that is some. Um... It was like, all right, I'm gonna get. <laughs> I deserve the hit me with it. I was like, all right, let's go back to the match. I was, it was amazing. And then it ended with uh, Braun Breaker coming in. Yeah, most obvious Walter. Braun Breaker interference of all time. Like, everyone yeah. knew that was going to happen. Um, yeah. But I like Braun as well, so I'm okay yeah. with that. He's like a Steiner that you can get behind. Yeah. First time for... <laughs> a Steiner for <laughs> First a time age. for everything, you know? Exactly. Uh, like, uh, as my, uh, I do love Scott, even though it is more of a... Uh, sometimes ironic with a lot of even though i think he's an excellent promo and he was an excellent wrestler he does say some extremely crazy shit like uh Samoa Joe, he's fat he doesn't deserve to be here because he's fat <laughs> so it's a little bit hard sometimes to <laughs> be like... it could be a little bit hard to be like oh well how much of this is real life versus him just saying yeah how much know. of this is real Yes, and of course, the brother is worse than Scott, so I won't mention any more. So I really like that Braun seems to be like a new Steiner for a new age and seems to be <laughs> a easier one to like and yeah, yeah. support. Uh, so I really want to really see where he goes. Also, really impressive in the ring, too. So I know there, there's yeah. talk of the, the triple threat at SummerSlam with Ilya, Sammy, and Braun. That match did go crazy. Yeah. Need and that I know that. Yeah, and I understand that a lot of people are, they want the rocket ship to be attached to, to Braun, and I'm just saying you need to hold your horses because this has yeah, happened in the past where they put the rocket ship, pushing yeah, hard for they, that. Yeah, they put they put the rocket ship, and then they blast off, and then they're all this and all that, and then after a couple weeks, it turns out they're still not ready, and I feel like Braun is can be pretty close to ready, but he still needs more time specifically like dealing with the main roster and doing all this and all that um so i'm gonna be interested basically what i see is i, I don't want another goldberg 
I think no, a lot of people no. Especially because the last Goldberg we had was awesome, which was uh, Oscar when she had that amazing streak that finally broke Goldberg's. I mean, that was the last time that they were able to do one of those, and I don't want another one of those because I feel like they've told all they can with it. So it's much. I would much rather prefer him to be in there, be like super, super strong, obviously, but still very like rookie type behavior. So he's still losing in ways that you shouldn't because he's just not got that yeah, red ring. Yeah, the hot head is really. not the. Not the calm yeah. guy that you need, yeah. Exactly, and I think eventually it will come to a case where obviously there will be a time where he will be a champion and he'll be going for the main title belt, but just not right now. Just, just wait. Just, just hold off. It'll all in due time, hopefully. Uh, especially nowadays, where they seem to care more about. It's not like back in like the '90s where like a wrestler would lose their belt like the next day. They seem to be wanting these to hold on to at oh, least yeah, a good they while. Want some actual title defenses yeah except for old logan but that was a contractual obligation so. yeah well so for everyone else yeah try their best yeah. all right well i think that is it for these two we got one more week of just raw smackdown and then we'll have the uh summer slam episode so it'll be the first ple episode which should be pretty cool Ooh. but yeah. uh mm -hmm. that's what we got for you this time on tentative title wrestling and chill <laughs> we'll workshop it workshopping it um, it's live brother <laughs> <laughs> we're live but uh we'll, we'll see you on the next one see you yep, see you in the next one peace out